Hello, okay, looks like today I'll be busy. Um, it's cold outside, it's like 50 degrees. So I come out here in my man shop and uh, turn the heat on and work all day. Yesterday was uh, interesting. Took the truck to a show. On the way back, started smoking like heck. So I either sucked an intake gasket or Maybe some, maybe an O-ring or an umbrella seal on top of it. So, and it's still drivable. It just smokes, and you know how that's ir going to irritate the hell out of you. Uh, so the the truck is in here in the safe safe paint room. I'll cover it up while I do all my other stuff. But yesterday, since I had a couple hours, I got out. They say everything was in primer. And you can see where I've, I just ran over this real quick. And there wasn't, there was a few little bitty holes that when I sandblasted, it kind of just peppered it a little. So just to be safe, you know, no big, it's gas tanks under there, no big deal. I kind of did that. The one rust spot I had and patched. Now this stuff you see right here, this is, Dura glass and everything else. This is metal. This is metal. I just kind of went over the epoxy <clears throat> real quick, but there's no other dents or anything on here. There's one little dent there. There was one little dent there. And on the doors, doors are fine, but where I had to weld that little spot down here in the corner. What this green stuff is, this is Dura glass. And I like to use it where there's holes or anything that I welded uh, <clears throat> because it's waterproof. Bondo, if you just stick that in there, it's fine. And then sometimes they're so small. If you got small hose, you don't want to get in there and be welding a bunch of crap because you end up just chasing it. So the trunk lid, same thing. It wasn't even, I didn't even weld there. It was just a spot that I, I, I like using the Dura glass. The fenders are good. So we'll get going on that. But let me show you before I do, I'm not gonna stand here and film sand and you know how to sand. Uh, but I will show you what I was using. So the epoxy I sprayed is Omni. They had, they did not have any of, uh, of that for a while. And I had to get this. The shop line supposedly made by the same people. It looks fine. That's what's on the frame and everything. Um, but because I sandblasted that, I want that epoxy on there. It sticks good. And any little, um, like when I showed you on the fenders, the paint degraded over time. You get a little pock mark in there and then it rusted through primer that's not waterproof. This will keep that from happening. So if you get a scratch, you get something, you know, other than the world ending because you got a scratch on your car, it'll, uh, it'll protect it better. But, Finally found some of the Omni, I like it. And after that, I go around and like I showed you there, I'll go around and sand at it uh, with 80 grit. I just wanna not put some tooth into it. And then I'll lay the Dura glass. And that, that's a hardener. So it's, you know, golf ball size drop of this stuff and I use <clears throat> I use that where I, either I welded and it's not filled completely. You weld, you know, if you do some butt welds, you know where there's going to be little spots down through there. I just put this on both sides, sand it back to where it's just filled in the hole or filled in the crack, whatever, and flush. And then I'll do bondo work. The bondo I've used tons of different things. I really like this stuff. There's a number right there. Uh, 
it works really well and sands really well. Uh, and then the other thing that I do is once I've done that, and I'll show you, but I've got all the material out here. I usually spray a coat of polyester primer. That's the thick sprayable Bondo that goes, uh, goes to regular gun. You use a 2.0, 2.2 tip. And it, what it does is it keeps you from chasing edges. So I'll do my Bondo work in a spot. And then instead of, you know, you feel it and you're like, oh, there's a little low spot and you mix more Bondo. And then, you, you know, instead of just keep chasing that all over, I rough in my Bondo. I hit it with uh, 36 grit, finish it off with 80. I might hit it with 120 on a board, straight, you know, straight sand it. And uh, then I'll mix this stuff up. And this will be the first time I've used this but it's supposed to be the same as the Slick Sand or the Feather Fill by Evercoat. Uh, and again, I, I just couldn't find it here local. And if I did find it, like Summit or someplace, this stuff used to be less than buck, uh, 100 bucks a gallon. Now it was like 225. And I'm, no, that's just, it's ridiculous. It's freaking Bondo. It's watered down Bondo. Anyway, that's the plan for that. But what I was going to say was instead of, chasing the little dents. And I saw a comment the other day, it was on, just on a website, somebody was asking something about painting. And some guy says, only hacks use um, slick sand or feather fill, polyester stuff. I guess it makes you feel good when you've worked a dent so long that it's perfect. Yeah, that that's one way of looking at it, but you know, I wouldn't necessarily call this hack-worthy paint, all right? The nice thing about that stuff – yeah, a hack, right? So the nice thing about that stuff is I'll spray it on but I'm not using it to fill things. Maybe if you're referring to that, that's the, that's the thing. But I've been doing this a lot of years. Somebody showed me that stuff, introduced me to it, and I've used it ever since. Because on something like this, where you've got little bitty light, you know, door dings. Yeah, you can stand there and mix Bondo and put it on and sand it and put it on and sand. Or I can spray one or two coats of the polyester, which is the same thing as Bondo, and then just block it off. I'll block it all off with 36 grit to where it's the same thing. I don't get it. I don't know why anybody would say something like that other than just trolling, who knows. Anyway, don't be afraid to use the stuff. It works great. But I will, if they're a little deeper than, you know, say, um, 16th inch or something that I think the polyester will fill. Yeah, I'll go ahead and put a little Bondo in there and then just block it real quick. And I uh, I don't stand there and try to make it perfect because that's gonna come in the next uh, stage of spraying the polyester. So I'm gonna get to work doing some sanding. All I'm gonna do is uh, I just use a DA and uh, one thing that I will say is use sharp, good paper. You try using cheap paper, then you're, you're, you'll you're find yourself forcing a DA, and then it just digs, and then you get ripples. The best thing you can do is buy good, um, good sharp paper, and then when I do like my block sanding, I buy this. This is really good gold stuff, uh, and I'll put it on a long block, all right? And again, a good one. This one's metal backed and it you you put the rods in it and keep it stiff or because there's sometimes you're going to want to put that on a little curve like on the TA here, you know, it's got a little curve there at the back. But don't try to save money on this stuff because when you put that polyester on and then you block it and I'll seriously, I'll hit it once with a 36 if I think it's, if it's a rough area. 
maybe 80, but not normally, normally on my first, first swipe at it, I'll put a 36 on there and just no pressure, just as straight as it'll go. And that's where you find, that's where you find your ripples. And it'll surprise you when we get to paint. <clears throat> Again, I see lots of guys posting, oh, you gotta start with 3000 grit and use all these, you know, super fine stuff before you can do clear. Uh, I don't do that either. I have literally clear coated, well, the truck. Uh, I've done a ton of black Trans Ams. If you wanna see pictures, hell, I'll, I'll just post some pictures, I guess. But the black turns out freaking flawless and that's where you can see most of your mistakes. Um, but I will take the clear and there's been times where, you know, everybody screws up. I had, had uh, I don't know, a, I wouldn't just call it a run. I'd call it a waterfall. I don't know what the hell happened, but you get like three or four of those runs together and then you're just better off. You're almost better off sanding it and recoating it. But the other thing you can do is, um, is uh, just throw 400 grit wet. Yeah, it's rough, but it'll take the, it, it, but no pressure. Don't use any pressure, but take those runs out and then Go up from there, use the 600 to remove the 400 scratches, blah, blah, blah. Another trick I'll show you when we get to, hopefully I can remember, is if you've got a run, like say there's a run, let's, let's use this for example, except turn it sideways. There's a run there, you can kind of see that spot. I'll, rather than use different files, I'll take a razor blade and right on top of the run with the razor blade straight up, Whoa, I just start scratching that, right? And you'll just take that run down and then you get the run disappeared. And from that point, you can sand it, do whatever. So, <laughs> I know. So anyway, I'll get to work sanding. Uh, got any questions, anything you want to see? Otherwise, I'm not going to film myself sanding. Sanding's easy. I may show you, you know, like on the block real quick or something like that, but there's no way to, you just got to get in there and get busy and start doing it. Don't be afraid to do it. I talked to so many guys at the shows yesterday uh, or this weekend when we went out, they look at the truck, they want it, they're afraid to do it. So they end up doing patina trucks. And I'm like, dude, give me your number. If you're local, I'll come over and show you how to spray. I've done it a dozen times. It's not that hard. It's scary because shit's expensive and you get and you don't want to waste that. But when you're talking about a paint job that would have probably cost you twenty thousand uh, dollars, I'd attempt to do it myself. And I did. That's how I can do this stuff now. Um luckily I had a dad that would tell me to get out there and get busy and do stuff. So if you wanted it, you worked for it. So anyway, that's that. Uh, I'll throw some stuff in here every now and then uh, on the same video, but it's pretty much just going to be a couple days of sanding and bondo. So we'll talk soon.